Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at a Sega Mega CD that I bought in a bundle on eBay with a Mega Drive 2. The Mega Drive 2 should work, the Sega CD is untested. Let's have a look what we've got. And here's my Mega CD. What an incredible machine. It's definitely seen better days, but we'll try and refurbish it as best as we can. To test it, I am using an original Mega Drive power supply for the Sega CD. It has a different power rating compared to the Mega Drive 2, but it works perfectly with it. For the Mega Drive 2, well, it's got its own adapter, so no problems there. For the best possible experience, I'm going to hook it up with this high quality RGB cable. Here, I'm going to test it with a Mega Drive 2. You can also use an original one if you have the Sega CD extender. Now let's switch it on without a cartridge and see if we get the Sega CD screen. Nope, we're out of luck. Let's see if the Mega Drive itself works with Earthworm Jim. Okay, that works. Since the Sega CD is not even powering on, maybe it's a problem with the power supply, so let's check that. And no, that's working fine. Just a little bit high, but nothing to worry about. Okay, so the Mega Drive 2 is working. The Sega CD is not. The voltage is there, so it's definitely a problem with the Sega CD. Let's open it up and find out what's wrong. All right, so here goes this assembly. I've never taken one of these apart before, so let's give it a try. Hmm, <clears throat> seems to be a little bit tough, but hey, I tug and pull a bit and... There it goes. Here you can see the silver mounting plate. You can use this with an original Mega Drive as well, if you flip it around. Let's move the Mega Drive 2 out of the way and start unscrewing the unit. There are only six Phillips head screws at the back holding it together. As usual, I'll speed up this process a little bit. Once unscrewed, just pry it open a little bit and it'll come apart. And we're in. It's quite dirty inside here, but we'll sort that out at the end. And here are some cogs that require some grease. As you can see, the metal shield is fine, but there is some rust underneath that we'll sort out as well. Time to take the shield off, so we do have another four screws to remove. Fortunately, we don't need any special screwdrivers to remove the shield. Just a bit of patience. And then lift up gently. And here's the motherboard, it's in excellent state. If you're wondering what this little PCB is, don't worry, it's not a mod or anything. It's a small correction board Sega made to the revision of this particular model. And this is the battery that holds the save game states. We'll have to see if this is still good or not. And this is the voltage regulator, which could be the cause of our problem. More dust than grime to clean. And here's the port that allows the Sega Mega Drive to slot in. And below it, the BIOS chip, which we will replace with a region free one. As a first port of call, I'm gonna try and see what voltage is present on the voltage regulator. As you can see, there's no voltage whatsoever. There seems to be no volts out, but no volts in either. In order to have a better look at the rear of the motherboard, I will have to take these connectors off. I've already tested the fuse up here and it's fine. And I've also tried measuring these test points, which again read zero volts. Okay, I've already removed two connectors. I've left the last one to show you how I do it. It takes a little bit of fiddling around, but it comes off in the end. So I thought I'd test it again without the CD connectors to see if it makes any difference, but no, no luck yet. In the end, I had to use a diagram and follow the power around the board. I found out eventually that there was a transistor Q302, had one pad that came loose. You can see it here. And here's the actual board where you can see one of the pins missing on the transistor. It should be connected down here. I created a bridge with a wire and here it is. It's working. Unfortunately, the wire I used to bridge the gap was too thick 
and the power plug wouldn't fit anymore. In an attempt to fix it by twisting the wire around, I managed to break off the pin and also damage the soldering pad of the resistor. Ugh, what a setback. So my next move was to find a replacement transistor and swap it out with the one I butchered. Of course, they don't produce this one anymore, so I found an equivalent one. And here it is in my hand. I desoldered the older one and it was really apparent where the pad had broken off. I cleaned it all up and prepared it to solder the new one in position. Because this is surface mount, we'll be using the hot air gun. I'll start with some solder paste on the pads. I use this particular one, but it tends not to stick very well. So if anyone's got any suggestions for a better one, please comment in the box below. Thanks. Anyways, back to the paste. Here, let's put some on the pads. The first one is relatively easy. It just sticks. But the second one seems to be more of a challenge. Anyways, in the end, I made it. Woohoo! And on goes the new transistor with a lot of patience. I set the soldering gun to the lowest possible airflow and move in circles. It takes a bit of patience. And whoop, one of the two pins has soldered. And there goes the other one. Now, time to let the board cool down. Now, I'm gonna prepare a much smaller wire that will start from here and go all the way round down to the resistors. It will sit much closer to the board and stay clear of this area, preventing the same problem I had before. So here's the wire. I'll tape it down so it doesn't move, add some flux and solder it in place. I'll do the same for the other end and we should have a working Sega CD. Let's test it, see if it all works. This time I'll have the Mega Drive underneath and I'll just have the motherboard of the Sega CD on top. And yes, success! Time to test the CD reader. So let's plug all the connectors back in and choose some music to start off with. Here's the disc holder so we don't have any flying discs. And now let's close the CD door. The disc is spinning, that's a great sign. It's checking the disc and it's ready. Oh, I'm very excited. Now it's time to try a CD game. Unfortunately, I don't own any, so I had to burn one for now, but I'll be soon starting a new collection. I am lucky that the Sega CD doesn't have any form of DRM. Back in the days, burning a CD was incredibly expensive, so no one would do it. Okay, it's read the disc. Let's press the start button. Is it going to work? Oh my God, it's actually working. Yay. I've done it. I've got myself a working Sega CD. Finally, after years and years. I'm so happy. Anyways, there's still work to do on the unit before I close it up. And the next step is the region free BIOS. Let's do it. This is the original BIOS that we've seen before. And here's the replacement. This will allow us to play games from any part of the world. And they're very cheap. This arrives through the post like it was from Ikea, all flattened out. So I have to bend its pins all back into place. I won't be soldering this directly to the motherboard. I will use a dill socket so we can easily remove the chip if you want to. I've disconnected the CD reader now and I will remove the port shield to get better access to the BIOS chip. There are only two Philip head screws to remove, which is pretty easy. Ah, yeah, that's much better. On the flip side of the motherboard, here are the two line of pins that I have to desolder. To desolder it, I'm going to use my desoldering gun. Ah, the first one didn't come. I'll have to sort that one out afterwards. Let's fast forward this. Well, you get the gist of this now, so let's just skip to the end. There's just that pin missing, so I'm going to add a bit of solder to it and then try again. Excellent! Job done. I bend the soldered pins both ways for an easy extraction. And then start prying the chip out with a screwdriver. 
very gently. And here you have it, it's out. And in goes the new socket. I'll solder a couple of points and then skip right to the end. The process is always the same. And here is the result of my dubious soldering skills. Enjoy. I'll test with the original chip initially to see if everything's okay. Perfect, it's still working. Now let's swap it with the region free bias. Out with the old. And in with the new. Time to test the new bias. I've hooked everything up together, put the CD back as well. And here goes. And yes, it is working. And this is the Japanese BIOS screen. And Sonic CD, one of the best games ever. Now let's see if the North American version works on this machine as well. And super success, it works. <laughs> it's very funny, this American version has got completely different music to the one I'm used to. <laughs> Yay! Incredible, I'm so excited I can now play any game I want. Cyborg 009, Devastator, any title I want from overseas. Really excited, can't wait to get into it. But now it's time to clean up and refurbish. Okay, here's the plan. Clean all the plastics to get rid of all the grime and dirt. Treat all metal components to remove rust and then we'll add a rust preventing compound. Lastly, polish and refurbish plastic so we'll reduce the number of scratches and blemishes throughout. To clean it all, I have to remove the lid by freeing these two screws. I remove the spring and place it in some rust removing solution, in this case, evaporust. The lid is removed, now it's time to take the bottom shield off. There's only a couple of screws holding this down. After which we have to just lift a bit gently and it will come out. The other shield has no screws, it just lifts out. Now look how dirty it is under here. Let's clean up. I'm going to go with a nice hot water and soap wash with a soft sponge first and then a thorough scrub with a hard brush. This to get rid of the really hard grime. Here's the result. Uh, as you can see, there's still some patches of corroded plastic that doesn't really come away. So we've done the best we can. Let's get on with the rest. More scrubbing of the top shell and the lid. And then all out in the sun for a nice dry. After drying everything, I'll soak the shields in evaporist. I recover the spring, it's very good, no rust on it. And now, time to restore some plastics. I'm not going to do the insides because these are not exposed and you can't see them. But I'll start with the bottom shell and see how that turns out. The bottom is quite etched and scratched, but I'm not too worried of the result as it's going to sit underneath. I'm going to use Megaya's Scratch Times 2 or Scratch X2, I don't know, uh, to start off with. Before I start, I'm going to sand everything with a P6000 sandpaper. It's a very fine sandpaper and it will remove the lightest scratches. This process is very scary because when you're doing it, you're thinking, oh, I'm ruining all the plastics, I'm ruining all the plastics. Or the plastics will come out all shiny. They won't. Anyways. After doing all this to my poor shell, let's try and give it a polish. For this <clears throat> bodywork, I'm going to use a smallish car polish. Here's some anti-scratch cream. We'll spread it around with a cloth and off we go. Ah, it's so good to see those areas lighten up again without all that plastic dust. For now, I'm going to use a harder pad on the polisher to get rid of the scratches even more. It's a time consuming process. You have to go over every surface, every part of the shell. Already after this, the shell looks miles better. Next up is the softer pad. 
This will remove all residues of cream and give the plastic that new look that we're looking for. Off we go again. As you see, the plastics are all popping back to life. It's really a pleasure to behold. Once again, this is a 20 minute job, so I'll spare you the pain and jump to the end. And here's the result. A lot less scratches, it's not shiny, looks awesome. And because I want to make an awesome job of this, I'm going to give the bottom plastics another polish with Megaya's Ultimate Black, which supposedly will make all the blacks of the console come back to life. And no, I'm not paid by Megaya. It's really obvious how the blacks darken as I pass the polisher over the shell again. This particular cream needs to dry before I can pass it one last time to dry it all up and give it the final look. Now I'm going to repeat the exact same process for the lid and the top shell. But for the sake of keeping the video short, I'll whiz through it all. Here's the lid sanded at the end of the first step of the polishing and here as it's finishing getting buffed. The top part of the body didn't need any sanding as it didn't have as many blemishes and scratches as the rest. And here it is ready to go. Here the metal shields all ready to be treated with permanent anti-rust. All I need to do is pour some in a jar and lay it with a brush. I'm using Loctite SF7503 and no, they don't pay me either. I just hope it's good. While I wait for the anti-rust to work its magic, I reassemble the top lid. I'll pop the lid in first, then I'll make sure the cogs are perfectly lined up. I'll tighten up the screws and there we have it, back together. Going back to the shields, I don't think they've turned out as good looking as I hoped they would, but they're inside and no one will see them, so I'll have to keep them as they are for now. They also should be rust proof for eternity. Time to close up. In goes the big shield, and in goes the smaller one. In goes the board. Oh, and let's not forget the shield screws. And back in goes the CD reader. Let's screw this back down and let's reattach the shield for the slot. I'll put some grease on the lid's cogs as well. Then I put the spring back in the lid. This was a very tricky, it took me a little bit of time. But here it is, um, it's done, looks good. And I'll spare you the pain of all the screws, but here it is, done. It is beautiful, isn't it? I'm ever so pleased with the plastics, they look great. The scratches are barely visible anymore and the blacks are really deep. It's beautiful. As a contrast, I'll stick the Mega Drive 2 on so you can see the differences. But let's just look at it like this for another couple of seconds. Ah, oh, what a glorious machine. And here it is. Here it is with the Mega Drive 2. Here's a small pan. Look at all the scratches of the Mega Drive 2. It looks awful. Well, I have to repair that as well, I think. But the stark differences is incredible. And here it is for the last test. We're going to do it with Sonic CD. Well, I have only that. Yeah, it's working. Great. I'm so happy. Now that was a long journey, but well worth it for me. Finally, I can play some Sega CD games with my kids. It's going to be great. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time. Until then, keep safe.